You've probably heard of power before in the colloquial sense of the strength that somebody can exert in order to get something done. In physics, power has a very specific meaning. It's the rate at which work is done by a force. So the average power is equal to the work divided by the time. So as an equation, we can write that the average power is equal to W divided by delta T. We can also calculate the instantaneous power of something, and this is given by dw dt. Now the units for power are the watt. This is named after James Watt, who worked on steam engines, and he managed to improve the rate at which steam engines can do work. So the watt has symbol W, a capital W, and it's equivalent to joules per second. Now you've possibly seen power before in relationship to electric circuits. These meanings of power are pretty much the same thing. In electric circuits, when we're talking about power, we're talking about the transfer of energy per unit time, which is what we're referring to here as well. Now we can come up with a relationship between velocity and force and power. So how we can do this is we know that work is equal to F dot S, where S is the displacement of the body. And we've seen that the instantaneous power is given by P is equal to dW dt. So putting our expression for work into our expression for power, we've got that power is equal to d dt of F dot S. Now, as long as we assume that our force is not varying with time, we can write this derivative as the power is equal to F dot ds dt. Now, you've seen ds dt before. When we were learning about velocity, you saw that velocity was the derivative of the displacement. So that's what ds dt is. ds dt is equal to v. So we can replace that ds dt with v, and we get that the power is equal to f dot v. So let's have a look at an example of how we can use this now. So the question is, at a certain instant, the speed of a block is 3.0 meters per second to the right. Two constant forces act on the block, F1 with a magnitude of 2.0 newtons to the left, and F2 with a magnitude of 4.0 newtons directed 60 degrees above the horizontal and to the right. What is the power due to each of these forces? What is the net power? Is the net power changing? Okay, so first of all, we need to work out the power due to force 1. So the power due to force 1 is going to be F1 dot V. And F1 is in the same direction as V, well, opposite directions, but they're both acting in the X direction. And the magnitude of F1, we're told, is 2 newtons. So this is minus 2 newtons because it's in the negative direction and V is in the positive direction and 3, so that's meters per second. So when we take the dot product of those, we end up with minus 6.0 watts. The power of the second one is given by F2 dot V. And in this case, there is an angle between force 2 and V. So this is written as F2 V cos 60, because 60 degrees the angle in this case. So this is equal to 4 times 3 times cos 60. Cos of 60 is a half, so this is equal to 6 watts. Now the net power, we just get by summing the powers. So this is equal to minus 6 plus 6, so that's equal to 0. So the net power is zero. We don't have a net transfer of energy with time. Now, it asks us, is the net power changing? Now, if we wanted to change the power, we'd need to change these expressions here. So in that case, we'd need to change the speed. So to change P net, need to change V. Because we're told in the question that these are constant forces. So the forces aren't changing with time. So the only way to change the power is to change the speed. Now, if we want to change the speed, we need to change the kinetic energy. So to change V, need to change 
okay? To do K, then we need to do work. We know that we need to do work on the block. Net, network. But if we are to transfer energy to the block, then the power needs to be positive or negative will be transferring energy away from the block. But as the power is zero, the energy is not changing with time. So this tells us V does not change and hence P does not change. So another way that we could think about this, we've considered the energy here, we could also look, well, what's the net force acting on the block? So we've got two Newtons from F1 going this way. If we consider the net force from F2 parallel to the direction of motion, then this is 4 cos 60, which is equal to 2. And so because we've got the balanced forces, the net force is equal to zero. And if there is no net force, we know that the speed is not changing. So we can use both energy considerations and our equations of motion. We can choose one of those. They both give us the right answer.